and human. There can be no physical violence. I don't want to, because I don't want to fucking fight. Hey, what's the jury judge think? Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them, Johnny, that I'm going to, man, I'm, I'm a victim of people's domestic violence. And yes. I, you know, it's a fair fight. It sees how many people believe or side with you. About six years ago, um, uh, Ms. Hurd made uh, some quite heinous and disturbing criminal acts um, against uh, me that, uh, that were not based in any species of truth. It's Amber Laura Hurd. I am here because my ex-husband is suing me uh, for an op-ed I wrote. I, um, I st struggle to have the words. I struggle to find the words to describe how uh, painful this is. I had a very interesting childhood, um, one that I thought was normal until a certain age. My mother, um, I was born in Kentucky. Elisa Christine Dombrowski. He's my younger brother. Um, he was, he was a, a, a shy, sweet little boy. He had a very caring personality, um, but also was a, he was a little bit of a, a clown. He loved to, you know, play tricks on us or try to scare us. He was a, a very typical happy little boy. Quite unpredictable. She was very unpredictable. Um, she was a she had the ability to be as as cruel as anyone can be um, with all of us. Uh, that is to say, my sister Christy and my my brother Danny and my sister Debbie. Um, also my father. <clears throat> so, um, essentially, um, she was, uh, she could become quite violent and she was quite violent and she was quite cruel and she, and though there was physical abuse, certainly, um, which could uh, be in the form of uh, an ashtray being flung at you, you know, that hits you in the head, or you get beat with a high heel shoe, or, or a telephone, or whatever's handy. Um, so, in our house, there was no, we were never exposed to any type of safety um, or security the the um, the only thing that one could do really um, was to try to stay out of the line of fire you um, I started to 
um, be able to observe and I could see, I could start to see when she was about to head, head into a, uh, when, head into a, a situation where she was going to get riled up and somebody was going to get it. Um, generally, uh, it was me. He was a typical little boy where if it hurt, he would cry. Did Johnny ever hit his mother back? No. What about when he got to be an older boy? Did he ever resist or hit her no. back? No. No. When he, when he was older, even if she hit or threw things, he, he never went to that place. He always, he would get away. He would, you know, leave the area, go to his room. There are, there's, there's physical violence, of course, there's physical abuse, um, to which she was, um, that was a constant. That was just a constant, you know. We were all somewhat shell-shocked, you know, even if she just walked past us, you, you'd, you'd sort of shield yourself because you didn't know what was going to happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um, so there was there was the physical abuse, which was was a, a constant. Um, there was uh, quite a lot of verbal abuse. There was quite a lot of name calling and um, bullying. You know, m making fun of making fun of whatever defect you know w w one might have. You know, I I was born with a very strange, it was a very rare uh, thing in my eye as the, the, the back of the lens is spherical, uh, normally um, is spherical. So in this eye, it isn't normal. This eye, I was born um, with a more conical uh, lens, so uh, my brain never learned to see out of my left eye and they noticed when I was about uh, three, four, five, three, four, that I had a, a lazy eye, a wandering eye and um, um, she would call me, <laughs> she would call me cockeye, one eye, um, any, anything anything she could get to, to uh, uh, demean, humiliate. Um, uh, I even had to wear, um, had to wear an eye patch on my good eye uh, to strengthen my, my bad eye so that it would cease to wander. It was, a mus it was exercising the muscles of the eye, though the brain had never learned to see, so I still, uh, my vision in my left eye is, uh, I'm legally blind in my left eye, but um, so yeah, the 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 verbal abuse, the psychological abuse, was uh, was almost worse than the than the than the than the, the beatings, because the beatings were just physical pain, and the physical pain you learn to deal with, you learn to accept it, you learn to deal with it. Um, but the, uh, the psychological and emotional abuse, that's what, uh, that's what kind of tore us up, I think. My father, my father was a very kind man. Uh, in fact, my father's still alive. He's, he's a very kind man. Um, he's, he's a, very quiet man. Um, in fact, he's very shy. Um, not a confrontational uh, person in any way. And when Betty Sue, my mother, um, would go off on 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 a tangent uh, toward my my father. 
Um, and, and, and of course, in front of the kids, it was no matter to her. Uh, he would, he would, um, he, he amazingly remained very, very stoic and uh, never, as she was rationing him with horrible um, things, he stood there and just looked at her while she delivered the pain and he swallowed it, he took it. Um, there was never one moment, never a moment when my father um, lost control and attacked my mother or hit my mother or even said he even said a bad thing to my mother. What, what I, the things that I witnessed were, there were a couple of times when it got too far that I, I would see his, I could see his eyes welling up as he was staring at her, saying nothing. Um, and then the most that he would do is he would, he would, he would punch a, a, a wall. I, w I once saw him punch a wall and um, it was shatter his hand because it wasn't it wasn't drywall it was um, proper concrete and uh, steel wire and rebar and things of that nature and uh, um, but still never never touched her never um, argued with her he. Uh, he, he, he remained a gentleman. And to me, as a five-year-old boy, I kept thinking to myself, I kept wondering why, why does he take it? How does he, how does he take this? And, 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 and why doesn't he leave her? Um, but he didn't, you know. Um, He was able to maintain his calm and his composure. He was able to maintain uh, his relationship with his children. Um, he was uh, he was he was a good man. He is a good man. I mean, out of out of. I couldn't count the amount of fights that they had, but I, I, I know that I, I've, I've seen my father strike uh, a wall um, two or three times tops. Once <clears throat> when he broke his hand. Um, but yeah, two, two, three times at tops, you know. My father was never my father was not an abusive man. Um, at the same time, my father was also, um, to some degree, at the mercy of Betty Sue. Uh, because if he argued with what she wanted done, and that would just turn into uh, a, a, another um, barrage of, of, of hatred uh, towards him. So I can remember my father coming home from work and m maybe I'd, I'd, I'd gotten a bad report card or maybe I'd uh, gotten in trouble at school or um, something like that. And my father would arrive home from work and the first thing she would say was, whose son just failed his math test again. Of course yours. Take him. He gets the belt. I'll never forget the uh, this white, thick leather 1970s era. Thick leather white belt that he would um, take off and and, um, and then he would uh, commence to uh, inflict the punishment uh, on on me 
Um, but interestingly, there was a, there was one time when my father, I I kept telling him I I didn't do this. It was another incident. I, I kept swearing to him that I I did not do what Betty Sue my, what my mom had said that I'd done. But he went through with the punishment anyway. <clears throat> and then, uh, not long after, he found out that I had been telling the truth and that I hadn't done what uh, I, what my mom had said that I'd done. Um, and he, he came to me and uh, apologized to me for um for having gone through with the whipping you know the belt Most places we've grown all of us have done for we live in and, um, I have to say um my mom never did that she couldn't she she knew what she knew she was raised how she was raised. And um, I had no power to change what was inside of her. At about the age of, I don't know, four or five years old, I, I can remember vividly my, my mom telling me to go get her nerve pills, you know, um, out of her purse that was hanging on the back of the door. So I'd go get the nerve pills and I'd bring her the nerve pill, she'd take it. And, um, you know, after a few years, you start to notice, well, you start to think about nerve pills, nerve pills. <laughs> and then she seemed to calm down after she took those nerve pills so when i was 11 years old um i wanted to calm down and i didn't know how to so i i'd bring my mom her nerve pill i would walk away and i would take one myself um to escape caring so much, feeling so much, uh, to escape the, the, the chaotic um, nature of, of, what, of what we were living uh, through. Um, so that, that, that was the beginning when I realized that nerve pills calm the nerves. Um, I can't say that I'm proud of admitting to that, but, but I, I have to say that I knew not what else to do. I knew nothing else that I could do. I have taken these substances over the years on and off, um, to numb, to numb. Um, having started with my, my mother's nerve pills at 11, of course, the, 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 you know, that's around the age that um, you're introduced to uh, marijuana, um, you're introduced to, and also depending on the where you're living and who you're um, associating with and who's around the neighborhood. Um, I, no, I wasn't shy to uh, try a substance for, to see if the effect of it would maybe even take a bit more of the edge off. I'd pretty much done all the drugs that I was aware of by the time I was 15 years old. 
that doesn't mean to say that I continued in, in, into that, you know, forest of, of uh, possibilities with regard to substances. Um, I wasn't uh, um, dropping acid every five minutes. I wasn't, I, I, there were many years that I didn't touch it. Yeah, I mean, I've always drawn since I was very small, since I was very little. Um, and always enjoyed drawing and then began to paint. Um, and I started playing the guitar when I was 12 years old. And uh, that saved my life because I locked myself into a, in, in my bedroom um, at the age of 12. Uh, listening to, r r you know, records, moving the needle back and then learning that piece and then learning it again. So, uh, so much so, to, I mean, th that I, 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 I don't remember, uh, I, I, I have no memory of going through puberty. I, 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 uh, I was just playing the guitar. I was just, I was obsessed with uh, my guitar. When I was young, when I was about 12 years old, my, my elder brother, um, Danny, um, walked into my room and r ripped the Peter Frampton record off my record player, threw it across the room and said, you gotta stop listening to this stuff. And he put this record on and it started and I'd never heard anything like it. It was called uh, Astral Weeks by Van Morrison. My brother turned me on to Van Morrison. Then he turned me on to soundtracks like Clockwork Orange or uh, um, um, Last Tango in Paris. Batman and Robin were, we each had a role in that. Um, and he's probably gonna be embarrassed if I say any of this, but um, you know, we practiced you know, karate kicks with each other and chopping. We were just friends. We were like best friends. Um, when my father left, I, I didn't realize that he had left. He left for, I, I was 15. I had, I had already uh, left school and I was a musician. I was playing in clubs and such. And uh, he left for work one morning. Just like every day. And he was packing his car and then he left. And then hours later, uh, my mom, Betty Sue, came home from work. It was about 3.30 in the afternoon. And she walked in the door and stopped. And, and just looked around like she felt something. And she just, I said, what's wrong? She said, your daddy's gone. I said, well, yeah, I seen him leave for work this morning. She said, no, 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 he's gone, he's gone. And she ran into the, uh, into their bedroom and into their closet and I followed her and I, she opened the door and there was one, yeah, his side, his rack of, clothing and all his belongings were gone. And she was quite upset. And I took her car and drove to my father's work. And I sat down in front of him at 15 and I said, listen, Seems as though somebody stole all your clothes out of the closet. And, um, and he said, uh, he said, yeah, yeah. He said, I, I'm done. I, I can't, I can't do it anymore. I can't, I can't live it anymore. You're the man, you're the man now. 
and uh, those words didn't didn't quite sit well with me. I, I I didn't feel like I was ready to hear those words, but that's what I got. Um, then my mom got very went into a very very dark uh, place, a very deep dark depression, as you can imagine, and. Um, and uh, she, one afternoon I woke up, I'd, I'd fallen asleep and I woke up and walked out into the living room. And I saw my, my mother um, like uh, very feebly um, and like almost, it was like a slow motion crawl. It, it, if I could stand up, I could show you just the, what I saw. Do you mind? Do you no, want you can stand up. Thank you. Um, I saw, I saw my, my mother, you know, in that, in that mode. So instantly, I knew that something was dreadfully wrong. And um, there was drool coming out of her mouth. And as I was about to run and call, the front door busted open, and uh, my uncle and uh, two paramedics came in and um, threw on the gurney and whisked her out of the house to get her to the hospital to, um, to pump her stomach. And she'd, uh, she had uh, swallowed uh, a multitude of, of pills to, to, to try to take herself out, to, to try to commit suicide. And uh, when she got out of the hospital, she was a small firecracker of a woman. She was about five foot two. But when she got out of the hospital, the depression was so deep. She, she was down to like, she lived on the couch and she weighed about 70 pounds. And that, all that imagery spun into my head at that time that I thought that was a very, in my head at the time, I thought that that was a cowardly way for my father to have left. And I, I, I was uh, deeply upset by that. Um, until my father and I had a conversation um, years later where I asked him what really happened, what, how did it happen when I was older? And he told me I was, I was, I was very disappointed in him because I started to believe that his exit was, was sneaky, cowardly. He didn't, when he said goodbye to me, when he left for work that morning, he just said goodbye, you know, goodbye, Bob. And I went, see you later, Pop. That was it. I'm homemakers. And I'm Pat Harvey. Actor Johnny Depp was slapped with a restraining order today after his estranged wife, Amber Heard, shows up in court with bruises on her face. CBS 2's Christy Fajardo has more on the divorce fight that has turned nasty. Hey, Amber. Flanked by security, Amber Heard doesn't try to hide the bruise on her cheek. 
Neither does her lawyer. You guys, she showed a lot of courage today. Yes, a judge granted the actress a temporary restraining order against megastar husband Johnny Depp. As evidence, her lawyer showed these photos. Hurt says this injury was a result of Depp throwing a cell phone at her and pulling her hair during a drug and alcohol-fueled rage. In a sworn declaration, she stated he had attacked her before, saying, quote, I am petrified he will return at any moment. There's a home, the old familiar sting. Try to kill it all away, but I remember everything. What have I become? Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Like you could fall and no one would hear? out your hand and oh someone will come running and I know that's it. even when the dark comes crashing through when you need a friend to carry you and when you're broken on the ground you will be found so let the sun come streaming in Cause you'll reach up and you'll rise again Lift your head and look around You will What? Hold up there, you! It's a shilling to tie up your boat at the dock And I shall need to know your name what do you say to three shillings? And we forget the name. Welcome to Port Royal, Mr. Smith. Mr. Scamander! Do you think Dumbledore will mourn for you?
Are you going to slash me? Will you be stabbing me now with that tool? So very uh, nice to meet you. Hello. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? No. Nope. Me neither. That's us. We're stuck that way, you and me, since you've told me. say it's right up front. Nothing below the belt. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. No. 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 Ola, we've come to take you to the room of spiders. <laughs> like, spiders. I don't like spiders, but may I have a hug? Yes! <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, it's the gift, you know. They're, they're giving me the gift, because to, to, to go into a place where, you know, I mean, I, I, I've spent time in... in um, uh, Great Ormond Street, where where it was, uh, I was I was the parent um, when my daughter was ill, and it was, uh, I mean, it was. The, I've known darkness in my life, but uh, that was the darkest period ever. You know, it was when I was doing Sweeney, and I'd always kind of done these visits, but after that, the visits became more and more important uh, because the kids. Bless them, you know, they're so strong, they're so courageous. But the parents are the ones who are slowly dying. And to be able to bring a smile or a giggle um, to these people is, uh, it, it means everything in the world to me. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? Oh, why have you asked? Can I give you that? I'm fine, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> really? This could take hours. <laughs> I would like one of your paintings of an elephant. I've got one. I'd like one. I mean, I have ten. <laughs> My love, there's only you in my life the only thing that's right my first love your every breath that I take your every step I make and I'm Proud of him, Kate. So proud. So proud. This is, uh, this is one I'm real happy to to help if I can. Kate, can you just tell, remind us again what the War Child Project's about? Well, the charity um, distributes money to to other agencies, which. What do you keep giggling at? <laughs> what do you keep giggling at? Sean, actually, that's all he's got. <laughs> Sean. Good news, I suppose. Actually, I'm going to marry Prince Albert. <laughs> You're marrying Prince Albert exclusively. I'm fine.
really concentrate on the album, you know, night and day and... She's given me the greatest gift that uh, one will ever get. You know. Beautiful child. Beautiful daughter. What else can you say, you know? And suddenly it, it turned around. <laughs> And the back had a face and it walked towards me, directly at me, and just said, hi. Yeah. And then I just knew it's, you know, it's over. Oh. It's over. Big trouble, you know. Big trouble. Big trouble. Big trouble. How, how would you say that she has affected your life? Um, changed it completely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, <coughs> Vanessa and my kids gave me life. Just... Et voilà. Est-ce que vous avez tout de suite su que c'était lui <coughs> Oui. À quoi ça se sait Ben, ça se sait que... Euh, il m'a fait de l'effet dans le noir, j'ai même pas vu sa tête. <rire> Et ben, en plus, c'est que la tête qu'il a... Euh, oui, non, si, c'est vrai. C'est vrai. Euh, c'était euh, c'était, chimique, c'était physique. C'était, On s'est serré la main. On était dans une pièce noire, on n'était pas seul, hein, je vous rassure. Mais... Et... Euh, on s'est serré la main et c'est passé, euh, je l'ai senti de partout quoi et je n'ai même pas vu qui c'était. Après j'ai compris, après j'ai vu et euh, c'était il y a long, longtemps avant en plus qu'on soit. Oui, c'est ça, vous avez commencé par vous croiser une première fois On s'est croisé plusieurs fois, ouais. mais... Euh... Et vous êtes retrouvé par hasard si tant est que le hasard existe Ouais, <rire> ouais, ouais, oui. Euh... Et surtout, comment on sait, euh, comment on sait que c'est la personne, c'est que euh, oh, c'est terrible. J'ai envie de l'embrasser. Ça fait cinq jours que je l'ai pas vu. Oh, mais comment c'est vous Non, mais c'est trop dur. C'est sa tête est énorme. En plus, j'ai l'impression qu'elle bouge vers moi. Bah tournez-vous, faites quelque chose. <rire> Lui, il est partout. Il est là. Il est là. Euh, comment on sait C'est-à-dire que moi, je crois que l'amour de votre vie, c'est aussi votre meilleur ami. Et que parce que on dit toujours les, les premiers mois, les premières années, l'amour, la passion, puis après ça s'en va ou quoi. Euh, D'abord, c'est pas vrai que ça s'en va. Et en plus, si surtout dès les premiers temps vous avez autre chose à vous dire que tu es belle, je t'aime, tu es beau, tu es magnifique, ici et ça, c'est que enfin s'il y a que ça, si vous avez que ça à vous dire, c'est que ça va pas traîner hein, cette affaire. Ça va pas traîner, c'est pas ça. C'est à dire que tout de suite j'ai su c'est que on discutait. Euh, euh, on discutait, c'était intéressant. J'avais envie de continuer à discuter et pas simplement pour le regarder. Euh, c'était intéressant et on ne parlait pas que de nous, on parlait de n'importe quoi. Et que, et que voilà, quoi, parce que ça, ça m'était déjà arrivé de tomber amoureuse. Mais euh, comment dire, je rigolais plus avec mes copines et mes copains. C'est dommage. Et quand on rigole autant avec son amoureux qu'avec ses amis, alors c'est que c'est ça, quoi. Je crois que c'est simplement ça le secret. C'est votre amour et votre ami. Et puis ça vous tombe dessus surtout, enfin, euh, c'est plus fort que vous, quoi, quand ouais. ça arrive. Oui, non, puis c'est évident et c'est surtout très naturel. Il mm n'y -hmm. a pas de, de maladresse, de j'ose pas ci, j'ose pas ça, on ose tout. Il n'y a aucune retenue, je crois, c'est évident. Johnny Depp, euh, élu l'homme le plus sexy de 2003 euh, par le magazine People, c'est pour vous dire que vous êtes chanceuse. Euh, ou alors peut-être euh, ça fait peur des choses comme ça, non Parce non, que, parce que euh, voilà, vous le voudriez pour vous. Mais je vous rassure, je, je l'ai pour moi. <rire> je l'ai pour moi et je n'ai aucun, aucune crainte. Euh, aucune crainte et puis, et, puis, et puis aucune crainte, on n'est jamais sûr de rien. Mais c'est pas parce qu'on a peur, on a peur, on a peur qu'on va empêcher quoi que ce soit de toute façon. Oui, la peur n'empêche jamais le danger. Donc, euh... j'ai pas de... Je vous laisse deux secondes avec lui. Hein. C'est terrible ce que vous me faites. Je sais pas si ça se voit à la télévision, mais il a ses yeux qui me, qui me fixent et qui me touchent. C'est terrible. Ah, je peux vous dire que ça se voit. Hein. <rire> I made the travel arrangements. They 
they were a, a, a great couple. I mean, first you could see that they were friends. Um, they, they just, they were happy together. They, they you know, um, they got along great. I hope the days come easy and the moments pass slow And each road leads you where you want to go And if you're faced with a choice and you have to choose I hope you choose the one that means the most to you And if one door opens to another door closed I hope you keep on walking till you find the window If it's cold outside Show the world the warmth of your smile But more than anything I've been, since May 27th, when my daughter was born, I've been floating. You really look happy. I'm floating. I, I've, I've just, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I've never, ever in my life, uh, I haven't lived before that day. I, I was not alive. I existed. I imagine that I drew breath and exhaled and all that stuff, but I don't have any particularly, you know, fond memories of it. I mean, I, I don't think I took a real breath until my daughter was born. You really look happy. I'm floating. I, I've, I've just, uh, yeah. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. He's, I'm proud to say, he's a, uh, he's one of the most devoted fathers I think that I've ever seen. Like everything, uh, everything in life was about the children. But when he was with the kids, like the attention that he would give them, you know, it was just constant playing with them, listening to them, you know laughing with them, reading to them, Barbies, I mean, you, you name it, and he, he was there. They, you know, they didn't want to disrupt the children's lives when they were going to school, so if, if dad had to go off and go work, and the children stayed home, um, this is where we get into, we still, we still maintained a home for the family, wherever he was filming. You know, um, because they would, if they had the opportunity to come back and forth. Um, and, but at the same time, Johnny would, he would travel back every two weeks, you know, to see his kids. It's amazing. It, 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 the only thing it can do is bring a smile to my face. Uh, Lily Rose came here. She came to Venice several times with <clears throat> Vanessa and I when, uh, when she was a, a baby a child. And, um, and uh, yeah, now to see this this um, incredible young woman um, and carrying herself with such dignity and and the choices that she's making. They, you know, they didn't want to disrupt the children's lives when they were going to school. So if if dad had to go off and go work, and the children stayed home. Um, this is where we get into, we still, we still maintained a home for the family wherever he was filming, you know, um, because they would, if they had the opportunity to come back and forth. 
Um, and, but at the same time, Johnny would, he would travel back every two weeks, you know, to see his kids. And Jack, uh, Jack's 15 now, yeah. And what is he, is, he's a musician, right? Yeah, he's a, he plays guitar, drums, and, uh, and he's also, he's, he's really, he's a very good artist. Right? When, <clears throat> excuse me, when, when Johnny was filming, most of the time, um, the family was with him. The family would travel and go, you know, it was like I said earlier, um, we would get a house and garden and, and all of that to make sure that there was a home. So his family was with him most of the time. Have you ever seen Johnny hit either of his children? No. Have you ever heard your brother raise his voice at his children? No. Poof. Perfect timing. Class dismissed. Hysterical. That is funny. Come on, Wayne. Before anything, I'm a father, and um, my my goal, my 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 real ambition in life, if. If, if I have any ambition at all, is to be a great father. Did you ever hear your brother yell at Vanessa? No. Did Vanessa ever claim that Johnny ever physically abused her? No. where I asked him what really happened, what, how did it happen when I was older. And he told me the story. I learned that I was wrong about my first impressions of his, his exit from the family. Um, very wrong. Because she was our mom and we loved her. We understood was that, you know, mom had her own upbringing, you know, so she had her own past and the way she was raised would affect the way she lived. Um, and so she, in our mind, she was doing the best she could do. You know, um, we sort of treated it like it, 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 she, she did the best that she could do with the tools that she was given, you know. Um, from her her life in the past. It, well, in 2011, um, she was living in Kentucky and we uh, uh, received a call that she had been diagnosed with uh, uh, the final stages of Parkinson's. Um, but then when another doctor uh, looked at her scans, they um, they felt it was something different. So we, we had the scans brought to a doctor in California um, and they suggested that she come out and see a neurologist right away. So uh, Johnny got a plane, um, a, a private plane, and, and he and I, we flew to go pick her up and bring her back to California to start seeing the doctors. You know, Johnny's big on mom not having fear. Um, so when we hired nurses so that the nurses could be there 24 seven. Mom lived in a house uh, that was basically a, a, across the street from Johnny. Um, it was a house that he has on his street. And uh, I, I was there, uh, you know, quite a bit. Johnny was pretty much down there every day, a couple times a day. Um, you know, mom 
like she would see them all the time. You know, one of her favorite things was watching Johnny take the kids to school and waving at them because she never got to do that before. So, did you ever see Johnny's children, Jack and Lily Rose, over at your mother's house across the street from Mr. Depp? Yes. Yes, mom's mom softened as she aged. She she totally softened. <laughs> The news? I'm a hat, but she's a witch. Did you dress her up like this? No! 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 no. no. Yes. 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 Yeah. A bit. Yeah. A bit. A bit. A bit. She has got a wart. <laughs> what makes you think she is a witch? Well, she turned me into a newt. A newt. I got better. Burn her in! There are ways of telling whether she is a witch. Are there? Oh, what are they? Tell us! Tell us! Tell us! Oh, oh, oh. Tell me, what do you do with witches? Burn her in! And what do you burn apart from witches? More witches! Wood! So, why do witches burn? Because they're made of wood. Good! Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, how do we tell whether she is made of wood? Build a bridge out of her! Ah, but can you not also make bridges out of stone? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. Uh, Does a wood sink in water? No, no. No, it floats! It floats! Throw her into the pond! <laughs> What also floats in water? Bread. Apples. Uh, very small rocks. Cider. A great gravy. Cherries. Mud. A churches. Churches. Lead. Lead. A duck. <sighs> exactly. Um, I, I, I grew up watching Monty Python, I, I, you know, so yes, it, it, it can tend to get into dark uh, humor. It can uh, tend to get uh, um, words are used that for emphasis, um, and words are used to express what what you're feeling at the time. My brother turned me on to Van Morris, and then he turned me on to soundtracks like Clockwork Orange or uh, um, um, Last Tango in Paris. Um, he turned me on to books by Jack Kerouac. He turned me on to books by Ginsberg, um, Philip K. Dick, I mean, Salinger, I mean, the whole, James Joyce, the whole, Hemingway, the whole thing. So, um, so I became very interested in a vocabulary and and the 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 unique voices of these writers um and then i started reading people like tom robbins and hunter s thompson uh, realizing that i needed to get together with hunter very very soon uh, to steal as much of him as I could. Hunter, I suspect that at some point very soon we should get together, if you have time, that is. I am here and could make the trip whenever. Hope all is well there with you. And then ended up becoming very close uh, friends with, with, um, with Hunter Thompson. So he, he became a huge hero, of course, to me, and a, a great friend for the last uh, 10, 12 years of his life. And uh, Hunter's writing, of course, because of the amount I spent, of uh, time I spent with him, it has influenced my writing uh, greatly. 
Hunter was known for inventing a thing called gonzo journalism, which is, it's, it's, it's uh, the author putting himself in the situation um, uh, as opposed to writing it from the author's point of view. He writes it with him in it. Um, and it, it, there are great um, embellishments and uh, uh, embellishments are great sort of ways that he would twist things and um, express um, his, 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 his feelings. Um, and I, uh, uh, in my texts and in my emails, or sometimes just even in my writing, um, you do, you take, you, you, you take the subject and you um, try to express it in your own vernacular. Around 2008, uh, Hunter Thompson and I were going through some of his manuscripts uh, of his books that have been published. And then I, I found this manuscript in one of his boxes and it was called The Rum Diary. And I had heard about it, and I knew it was what they called his long-lost novel. In fact, the only novel he ever wrote. Um, and I showed it to him, and Hunter was Hunter was shocked. My God, that's where it is, you know. And, and uh, so he said, "Read me some." So I started reading this to him, and he said, "This is a movie." You know? We, we, we must produce this together and you know he got all excited about the the idea of doing that so we went right into it and we started to um set up meetings to uh, to get to 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 get money uh, financing to develop the project and uh, we finally ended up getting the money to develop the project and to make the film Uh, Paul, you said your kids call uh, Johnny Uncle Fun. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? Because he has an island. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, you know, I mean, it, it, it is. I was, I was thinking about it earlier. Somebody was asking me, and it's, it, he, he comes around, and it is like having uh, some hobo magician from the 1930s turn up at your house. He just sort of, and it, you know, the kids... Uh, the kids love him because he falls over a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think because they can just push me over. <laughs> yeah, keel sideways. Yeah. <laughs> I was working on Pirates 4 and 
and uh, there there was a scene in which I had to um, grab this large gold and uh, gold and red, you know, stately gilt chair, pick it up and throw it, chuck it out this uh, big giant window. And so I did it, and as I swung around to throw the, throw the chair out the window, um, I felt this immediate electricity from, from the bottom of my spine down to, down my left leg. Um, and it was like an electricity that burned it. it, it, it. So I had obviously done it was sciatica, so I had obviously pinched something, done something. So then I saw a doctor and, and uh, the only pain medication that she uh, recommended and prescribed to me was uh, uh, roxycodone. You could feel this traveling into your system. Your your your, your um, receptors are out in mass, and your receptors are demanding that drug. If you if you don't give the drug to the to the receptors, you're gonna you will start going into a pretty nasty withdrawal, and um, you start to get the the. The, the the shakes and the tremors, body cramps and nausea and 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 stomach cramps and seizure of the bones and the shaking and and also the it's a quite an emotional ride as well. So. The key was that I I if you take two you will be um, what they call on the knot, you will be that. You'll, you will just drop into sleep. I didn't like being dependent on, on, these, on these pills. I didn't like being dependent on, on, um, a, on a drug that would, you'd take only so you wouldn't get withdrawals. I didn't uh, uh, hit you across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. Was but you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are you? Talking? How? What am I supposed to do? Do this? I, I'm not sitting here bitching about it, am I? You are. Oh, That's the difference between me and you. You're a fucking baby. Because you started. You are such a baby. Grow the fuck up, you Johnny. Started physical fights. I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did. So I had because, to get the fuck out of there. Yes.